Hey Bayside, Brandon Short here, and I'm coming to you right now from the main stage at high school camp. I've got to spend this entire week every single morning with the students in our church from all of our different campuses. And parents, let me just say this up front. I love your kids. I didn't realize how much I needed this week at camp and how much I needed to be refreshed by them. But I've been taking them into some deep places. I've been taking them into the depths of what it means to have proper identity formation. What it actually says in the Bible is our first and primary identity as it pertains to how we relate to God. See, John 1 verse 12 says this, Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave them the right to become children of God. So I've been talking to these students about how their primary identity isn't the things that we often think. They can't reverse the order. They can't primarily be disciples. That means student or pupil or adherent of a way. They can't primarily be disciples or peacemakers or reconcilers and think that doing those things actually brings them into the family of God. No, rather they have been so loved and are so cherished and so beloved by a father who calls himself love that they've been made children and being children of that God, being children of that father, then fuel them as peacemakers and reconcilers and disciples in our world. But you know, I, I noticed that it's not just student age kids that think about this, that struggle maybe even with their own identity at times in the life of faith. I know that I do. I know that we do as well. So as I've been encouraging and taking them into the Bible, I want to take myself there and I want to read you a quote and ask you a question, maybe prompt you to do some work in this regard as well. As I've seen these kids have breakthrough this week. Let me just say this before I even read that quote. I've seen so many of the students for so many different campuses realize that a life of reckless abandon is only possible if it's fueled by their kinship from God that their kinship to God is what unlocks the door for them to live with abandonment for him. Here's the quote. St. Teresa of Avila said it like this, May you be content knowing you are a child of God. Let this presence settle into your bones and allow your soul the freedom to sing. Allow your soul the freedom to praise and allow your soul the freedom to love. I want to ask you this today, no matter where you're at, no matter what age and stage, what campus, what area you live in, no matter your background, if it's true that your primary identity is a child of God, that you could never do or work or peacemake your way into the family, no, you've been so loved, you've been made God a family. If that is your primary identity and this truth allows your soul the freedom to sing, then let me ask you this today. If it's true, how can you live with more courage and more freedom? And what's that thing that just now came to your mind? Man, if that is actually true, if that's reckless abandoned living, then maybe I could live with more freedom and courage in this particular area. Whatever that thing is, take it to him. Take that to God. Pray on it. And friend, brother, sister, live in freedom because the Father's got your back.